there is power in the blood. And so I want to focus on the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. And I declare again that there is a difference in the blood of Jesus. Throughout, throughout the, the, the span of the scriptures, the holy word, we see the use of blood in different circumstances and different situations. Blood had an important role throughout scripture. As a matter of fact, when, when uh, in the Old Testament, when God was instructing them how to do the rituals and the different ceremonies, he told them exactly in Leviticus that the life is in the blood. Praise the name of the Lord. In Leviticus 17 and verse 11, it says, For the life of the flesh is in the blood. And in verse 14, it says, For the life of all flesh is the blood thereof. Whosoever eateth it shall be cut off. In other words, there is no life without blood. Praise the name of the Lord. The minute someone is going to be confirmed dead, there is what we call a deoxygenation. In other words, the body starts to get cold and so that blood now has no purpose for the body. There is no life if there is no blood. Praise the name of the Lord. And when we observe major events in the scriptures where blood was used, we realize that there is a role or a purpose with which the blood was used to fulfill. When God was making covenant with the children of Israel through Moses, Moses killed the ox and he sprinkled half of the blood on the children of Israel and the other half upon the altar. It was a symbolism of the seal of the covenant that God was establishing with Israel and himself. We praise the name of the Lord. Somebody bless the name of Jesus. So in that first part over the blood, hallelujah, not the first part over, in that making of the covenant, the blood symbolized the seal or the authority upon which the covenant was being established. In the first part over, in Exodus, God would have again said to Moses, you're going to put the blood of a lamb over the door, hallelujah. And so the angel of death would have passed over because the blood would have symbolized protection. We bless the name of Jesus. And again, in the ceremony, on the day of atonement, or as it was called, the Yom Kippur, when the priest would go up to offer sacrifice on behalf of the 12 tribes of Israel, it said that he had to slaughter with a goat, with a calf, with a dog, whatever it was, a perfect sacrifice. And that blood was sacrificed for the atonement of sin. There was no life without blood. And the blood symbolized a sacrifice for the sins of the world. But the thing that I recognize is that in all the situations, there was no blood that could have condemned and destroyed sin permanently. Somebody bless the name of Jesus. In every ceremony that the priest went into the sanctuary, it could only cover the sin, but it could not destroy it. We bless the name of Jesus. Let us go back a bit into Genesis. That the perfectness of the earth could not be recovered by God's blood. Because every year the priest had to renew the covenant. Somebody bless the name of Jesus. Perfect. 
said, well, speak a dan doctor. So if the word of God tells me that when Jesus Christ died, the bell rang, not from bottom to top, but from top to bottom, we know that that must have been a divine act. Understand that the bell separated the outer courts from the inner courts.